Welcome to Dracina Wines Podcast. Our wines plus your moments equals great memories. I'm your host, Lori, and this is a podcast about all things wine. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Wine for Bed Street. It is hard to believe that we are already up to the letter M. I hope that we have been able to expand your knowledge and palate just a bit throughout this series. Today's wine is Menthia. It is a wine predominantly found in the northwest region of Spain, but also in Portugal, and now a little is being planted in Australia. This is the first wine in quite some time that both Debbie and I gave two thumbs up to and would recommend for you to hunt them down. So uncork, unscrew, or saber that bottle and connect with us as we chat, laugh, and drink some Menthia. We are live. Hey, happy Wine for Bed Street Monday. It's the letter M this week. So the letter of the day is M, and it stands for Mencia, which is in Spain. Um, so this is the first time I've heard of this uh, particular great variety. It, it is the first time that I've heard of it also, but what is interesting to me is since we decided to do it, I've heard it multiple times in like the last couple of months. And it's funny because I've seen it. Um, funny, yesterday I was looking for a wine to open for dinner. We had prime rib, grilled prime rib. So I was looking through my wine cellar thing, and I pulled out a Spanish wine, and it was Mencia. Didn't even know I had it. Oh. I said, I, I, said, I can't open this. Yeah. Can't be cheating. Yes. <laughs> be cheating on you. Yeah, don't cheat on me. Don't cheat on me. No. No, Alma Alma would be sad. So, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Debbie Giafrindo. I'm the Hudson Valley Wine Goddess. Um, I'm a certified specialist of wine and a wine location specialist in Port and Champagne. Um, I recently published, or a year ago published, Tapping the Hudson Valley. It's a book on day trips and weekend itineraries visiting the craft beverage producers in the Hudson Valley and the sites along the way. Um, I'm co-owner of Happy Bitch Wines. I'm a partner in a restaurant in uh, Stone Harbor, New Jersey called Kitchen 330. And um, I don't know if I've left anything out. I'm a wine blogger, wine writer, and uh, I'm not taking on any more new projects. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm Lori Budd. My husband and I, Michael, uh, own the Dracina Wines, a, a boutique winery in Paso Robles. We specialize in Cabernet Franc. We also, I, Elma was all happy about Cab Franc. Um, and we also produce a rosé of Syrah. And we are getting ready to bottle, I can't believe it, our 2016 wine will be bottled in July. Uh, we just finished our blending of our reserve. So, yay, we're going to have a reserve, a single vineyard designated wine. And what else? I am a wine blogger, a podcaster, obviously live streamer. Um, just came back from Bordeaux where I was a guest of uh, Clerc Mion uh, for the uh, Dance Awards, which blew my mind. So beautiful. And... um Drank lots of their champagne in 2001, 2009. Pretty oh, darn wow. good Bordeaux. <laughs> what, what an experience. It was, it was incredible. That really is. That's a once in a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it so was truly. I can't wait to read about it. Oh, I, I got to write it. <laughs> but yes. And again, it's so, I still haven't finished all of my writing from my first trip there. Um, but uh, it's 
I did get out. I did get out the Covent de Jacobin, which was very uh, near to me. And he was such a sweetheart. He wrote me and thanked me for the podcast and the and the uh, blog, which I couldn't believe, you know. So that was very sweet of Xavier. But today we are going to Spain. So yes. northwest we, Spain, to be exact. Northwest Spain, yes. Um, so. We are, I'm going to start off with the general characteristics. So, Menthea, so I actually say it's Menthea, it's actually Menthea, is a medium. Is that how it's pronounced? Yes, yes. Um, is a medium bodied red wine grape that produces wines with floral and red fruit flavors. If the fruit is harvested from older, low yield vines, it has shown the ability to age like other fine wines, and it is suggested as an alternative for Pinot and Gamay lovers. So I, my guess is that I'm going to like what's in this glass because I'm a Pinot and Gamay lover. So we'll see if they are right. Uh, Menthea makes its home mainly in the northwest above the border of Portugal in a region including the districts of Bierzo, Ribeira Sacra, and Val de Ross. Since the region is not typically a tourist area, Menthea has been quite the secret for quite a long time. Another reason actually has been local neglect. Traditionally, Menthea was dismissed as an indifferent local table wine and was hardly ever seen outside of Spain, resulting in a rather thin and kind of lackluster wine. So because it was just thought of as a typical table wine, no real effort was put into it um, to export it. And when it was, it wasn't exactly the highest quality wines that, that people were seeing. Uh, in the 1990s, several wineries began producing exceptional wines and then people started to take notice and started going, hey, how can we get this, whatever. And now the um, exportation of it has increased. So our little map here, these are the regions. And there's my little lovely Rhea Spacious. Oh, I love that place. There's a bucket list for me also. Um, Menthia is the primary grape of the Bierzo region, actually covering nearly two-thirds of the vineyards. This red grape variety is grown almost exclusively in the northwest part of Spain, especially in the DOs of Galicia, Valdeoras, Montiero, and Ribeira Sacra. Mencia ripens early, actually by mid-September, and is well suited to the maritime climate of the Bierzo, where autumn rains are quite common. So it sees a lot of rain, so they're, they're harvesting by mid-September, I was curious if that really is at the full ripeness or they're trying to beat some of the rain. So that is probably more along your lines. Okay, the terpenes and terpenoids. Menthia contains high levels of the subgroup aroma compounds called terpenoids, which translate into lovely flower aromas, strawberry and raspberry. So all up in my jam right here. I'm like dying to try this wine. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Um, in addition, there's black licorice, pomegranate, and cherry sauce. So all of the things that I love to get in wine. When you look at a glass of Menthea, you'll notice it's a deep red purple with subtle hues of violet towards the rim. And the color tells that Menthea has the high anthocyanin, the red pigments. So I just had to like look at it and that is spot on. That is spot on. I mean, this, I don't want to use the word, um, but I'm going to. Like, it is dark, like grape juice, like pure yeah. grape juice. But it is spot on that it's the deep purple. So there yeah. are a lot. It will give us some purple teeth. Yes, yes, I believe so. Um, okay. On the palate, you'll be greeted with peppery flavors. That's the little powdery stuff there. Peppery flower flavors, sour cherry, red currant, and pomegranate, along with bitter cherry pit flavors, which comes from the wine tannin. Now, this is this is a complete sidebar, but red currants. Um, where was I? Forget where I was, but um, Mike and I were out for dinner. 
So it had to be over Memorial Day weekend. And there was red currants on the plate. But neither of us knew what it was, you know. And I was like, what is it? What is it? And I did my typical, well, you taste it first, you know. And uh, so he tasted it. And he's like, I know what this is. Taste it. And we tasted it. And we both said it was red currant. But, like, we did it backwards. Like, normally people taste the food and know it in the wine. We knew right. it from the wine. We knew what the food was. And then we did ask, and we were correct. It was red currant. So that was that was the first time we've actually physically tasted one. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah, they are good. Yeah. Um, all right. So in the regions where it grows in Spain and actually in Portugal, you will taste a subtle crushed gravel or granite-like minerality in the texture, which often contributes to that black peppery taste. What I was talking about earlier, I, I couldn't find if it was a major problem or not, and that's what you're talking about. Uh, Menthia can be a trouble child in the vineyard. It is susceptible to botrytis and mildew and can lose its characteristic acidity rather quickly if not harvested promptly. Menthia's high alcohol and high acidity must be kept in check to retain the wine's balance. So there, there's quite a bit of winemaking hands involved, not necessarily to hide faults or do anything like that, but eyes, eyes on the prize. They constantly have to be checking the wine to make sure that it's going in the direction that they want it to go in. Oak is used sparingly as it can overwhelm the uh, delicate flavor profile. And some part producers are now actually starting to experiment with carbonic maceration uh, to accentuate the variety's fruit characteristics and to reduce the tannins. So that is a process that California wineries are doing also. It, it's to kind of, you take these big wines that have high tannic structure, through carbonic maceration, it allows you to get the color out, allows you to get the flavor out, but the tannin is not um, released in such high amounts. So that is what I have for general characteristics. So what do you think? Time to drink? Yes. Okay. I haven't had it alcohol all day. Neither have I. And I didn't drink sure. yesterday. Slancha. Oh, I love the nose. I do too. It's a pretty nose. Okay, here we go. Violets, I get. Wow. Oh, definitely sour cherry. Mm. It's got a very long finish. This one's got pepper. I love it. I love the pepper. I get pepper on the, I get a little bit of pepper on the nose, but I would say white oh, pepper, pepper, not black. This, would, this wine here, it explodes. Oh, this is a winner. Holy this cow. This is um, sour cherry, red carb. It's, mine is really good. The acidity is so yeah. good. It just, it, it takes your tongue and wants you to have more. It's, yeah. it's the acidity. Wow. Holy cow. Bam, Menthea. I'm thinking this, well, I'll get into the food, but this is going to go great with, with food, too. So I'm drinking Godelia Menthea. Okay, so I am drinking Petiolas. Oh, what a pretty label. Right? Petiolas. Yeah. And one of the things... Um, so Men Mencia is a Spanish grape grown in the northwestern part of Spain, um, just outside the Galicia uh, region. Bierzo, Valdora, and the Riviera Sacra are most known for growing the grape. It's also grown in the northern part of Portugal and goes by Jean Dado. Isn't that a cool name? <laughs> it is. It is a really cool name. Um, the spiritual home of Mencia is... Bayerzo, which is situated in the far west corner of Castilla y Leon. 
and the zero consists of both numerous small valleys with high altitude sites that are perfect for growing this grape. So here we have some pictures of um, once um, thought to be a clone of Cabernet Franc. See, that's why we like it so much. I, I know, I know. Um, it's like near and dear. And the University um, of Madrid did some DNA profiling, and it's not related to Cap Franc at all, but it's <laughs> identical to Portugal's uh, Jean Daudo. So here I have the Cap Franc grape and the Amenthia grape, and you can see a little bit of the similarities. Yeah, I just, I can't get over how much foliage there is. That's like oh, yeah. serious. Well, you know what, maybe they, need... they don't do leaf pulling or something. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, um, that's a lot of energy into leaves. Yeah. But, but maybe they need it for other reasons. Maybe. So, Menthia was overcropped with high yields, and the wine was thin. And it was, was not a wine that people really sought after. It was kind of, um, in a particular region, kind of like just... I'm going to say left. Nobody really was focusing on the grape. And then Alvaro Pal Palacios, who comes from a wine-growing family in the Rioja Baja region, he got into, obviously, wine. Um, he studied in Bordeaux, and he moved to Prat, mm -hmm. where he created uh, wines from old vineyards of Grenache and Carina. And so whose wine cool. am I drinking? Are you drinking his wine? I am drinking his wine. Oh, that's way cool. <laughs> that is way cool. So in 1998, he went to Bayerzo with his nephew, Ricardo Perez, and he opened up um, the winery, but he started making wines from the Menthia grape, and he sought out old, neglected wine, uh, vines to do this um, on the hillsides of Bayerzo. And they also re they bought land they replanted with Mencia, and they provided they realized that the grape was really capable of producing a good elegant wine and a wine that also aged. Before that, the wines they were just I I would say just thin everyday wines that you don't put much thought Wait. into. Um, Mencia has to be watched because it is very susceptible to botrytis and mildew. And because of the weather, as you said, um, it'll lose its acidity if it's harvested too late, with alcohol levels rising to undesirable levels. So not only, you know, a lot of times, you know, grapes will be left on the vine to, you know, have the sugars rise. Here, it, it's really essential that they pick it at the right time. And at the right time, not just for the mildew, the botrytis, but it's it's everything. It's it's you know I would say it, it's very um, sensitive. Yes, yeah. you have to do it at the right time. So that's pretty much what I have. Um, yeah, it, was... it really wasn't. I, I tried to research, and there's not much known on it. They they still don't know the DNA on it. Right. Um. I found this to be a very difficult grape to do research on. Um, you know, every website I went to, everything I read was exactly the same thing, just sometimes not even in different words, exactly the same thing. Right. There was, you know, there wasn't really any true history. There wasn't any, you know, right. it was very Except difficult. The gentleman who saved it. Yeah. they were you know, it was just all gone to weeds, pretty right. much. Right, right. So, I guess they're going, you know, I guess we have a long way to go in finding out more about this grape and the history of it. Um, but there's really not a lot of information on this at all. This is a darn good wine. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And I'm trying to think back to our, pat, you know, our previous um, Wine for Bet Streets and, you know, this is the first one that I'm like gangbuster over in a, in a while. You know, there's, yeah. there's others that I've liked, um, you know. This is very similar, though. See, the, the things, characteristics that I like about a Cap Franc is I love the pepper. Right. 
I love that burst of pepper and the burst of spice in the wine. And this is giving it to me. Uh, My bottle is. I kind of get, I kind of get the gamay. I didn't want that drop to fall. I had, did you notice that? I couldn't waste yeah, that I drop. Saw that. Um, I, I kind of get good. the concept of a gamay, but not a pinot. It's, it's bigger than a pinot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, bigger than a gamay too. it's bigger than a gamay also, but the, the aromas are more yeah. gamay like to me. Um, but I, I'm digging it big time. Some uh, little vanilla in there, yeah. Mm. I'm, I, you know, it, it really does remind me of the Cap Franc. It does. It does. It's not as weight wise. It's a little bit lighter than the Cap Franc. It has more. I think it has more acidity. It has more acidity, like more towards the Gamay. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, I really like it. This is a good time to talk about our sponsor. Do, 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 do. Okay. So our sponsor is Wink Wines, and um, basically Wink Wines is a, a wine club that you can join for free. And what you do is you take a little profile quiz. The first time you go to their website, you take a little profile quiz, and by answering these simple questions, they give you a palette profile, and then they start to recommend wines for you. And every month you get four bottles shipped to you, you can add to that if you would like, but as long as you take four bottles, the shipping is included, okay? And you can either pick the wines that they recommend to you every month, or you can say, no, I want to do this instead. Add to it, take away, do whatever you want to do. If you don't want wines that month, you can skip a month at no penalty. So it's a really variable type of wine. And if you go to our link, which is try wink.com forward slash winefabet so t-r-y-w-i-n-c dot com forward slash winefabet you're going to get $22 off of your first box and that pretty much gives you four wines delivered to your door for like under $30 so it's awesome you can cancel at any time and uh, you can skip if you want you can add you can do whatever they have everything I've gotten ciders from there um, and really? yeah, I've got ciders and, uh, next month's episode is going to be a wine that I got from wink.com. Uh, they're always changing and it's a whole bunch of different wineries from all our winemakers from all over the world. So there's California, there's Spain, there's Portugal, there's, there's loads of wines constantly changing. So just check it out. If you're interested in getting a good deal, you know, 22 bucks off of your first box. If you don't like your first box, that's four wines for under 30 bucks. Cancel at no penalty. So, but yeah. So this is my wine. Okay. I'm so this is Petiolos and this I got for, it is a 2015. And one of the interesting things that I did read and that I did notice on this is that Menthea is hardly ever, ever, ever on the label. Does your label say, Menthea? It does. It does? On the front? It does, right? In the back? Right underneath oh. the name. Oh, okay. Typically, it actually doesn't say it on it, according to the statistics. It's more important about the region. So on the back, it says, um, you know, this is from, um, well, it's in Spanish. I mean, um, it is from, from Petiolos 2015, and Bolsado por Descendes de J. Palacios. So from the descendants of Palacios. Um, and it is uh, from Bierzo. Bierzo. Yep, this is also from Bierzo. Um, so I, honestly, you pretty much said my wine because uh, that was the same information I had about the wine. Uh, this actually got a 92 with both James Suckling and Robert Parker. And at $18, I'm going back and buying more because it was pretty stellar. Um, but it is from the famed winemaker Alvaro Palacios. It's, according to them, this rich velvet textured red is actually made from 60 to 100 year old Menthea vines. And they are grown in the deep, in um, steep slopes of Bierzo. Uh, and I was next. I was going to talk about where he came from, but you went over that. Right? He's from Rioja. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, he worked for Chateau Petrus in Bordeaux. Well, okay, not too shabby of a place to, to work. Um, upon returning to Spain, he ventured northeast to Bierzo, and he kind of found his love with Menthia and with the region, wanting to make wine from the region. Um, he's traveled his native Spain. He's, uh, he actually was first a barrel salesman. So he used to sell French barrels to the winemakers. And during his journey, he would always like, here's my barrel. How about you give me some wine? <laughs> so he was constantly try. He was constantly like tasting wines from different regions that he was selling the wines to or the wine barrels to. In 1990, he ultimately found um, Perroir, uh, which is where he would achieve worldwide fame with La Merta and Finca Dofe. I am not familiar with them, but apparently that's worldwide fame. Um, but he also did love Bierzo. And what else did you not say? Um, so it had the ingredients... Of Alvaro wanted the region had the ingredients that Alvaro wanted distinctive terroirs and ancient vineyards and it had the Menthia grape and so this was what he wanted to do he wanted to be the spokesperson for Menthia so he is like me with Cab Franc what yes yes he is the reason why it's there um so that beginning in 2001, his estate began to make individual vineyard bottlings. The winery itself is dedicated to his father. Um, he works with his son, Ricardo, and um, that's pretty much the wine. Minus what you already said, because he's so famous. <laughs> so mine is from Godelia. Okay. And... In 2009, uh, Vicente um, decided to produce wine with the Mencia grape, or open also a winery because he, he makes wine from other grapes as well. And um, this particular wine, what I'm drinking, actually, is, it's much older. It is a 2012. Oh, wow. So this shows how, how it ages. I would, I would love for us to be in the same room. Since yours is a younger wine. To taste, yeah. To taste the difference. This particular um, Dementia comes from 50 to 90-year-old vines. All picking is done by hand, loaded into small plastic crates, and then chilled 24 to 48 hours um, at 23 degrees in reef containers. And this causes them to split and begin maceration on the skin. It's then cold soaked. Um, and entirely destemmed. Fermentation starts slowly as the musts warm up in the tank and the temperature remains cool, 69 to 71 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, through, from, through the entire fermentation period. The wine uh, rests on the skins for another six days with gentle extraction um, with uh, short pump overs. And the Menthia spends 12 months in 105 and 132 gallon oak casks and these oak casks 90 percent are french 10 are american and one third of them are new oak oh um so you are up again we're going to talk about uh the uh, food, food pairings uh, food curious what you came up with because my mind is uh so well you know what you're always going to go with what's available in the, you know. In the region. In the region. So, Manchego cheese. But, uh, let's see here. What do I have? Pork. It goes very well with pork. Um, it cuts through the, the acidity cuts through the fattiness of the pork. And it also, I don't know if I, I don't remember if I did a duck. I did. That's Kitchen 330. <laughs> <laughs> um, duck will go very well with this because of the fruity, um, as long as it's done in a fruit-based uh, accompaniment with the duck, like a lot of duck is served with, um, you know, a blueberry compote or a cherry compote or some type of a, 
a fruit profile. Right. And it'll match, a roasted duck, it will match with uh, this grape. And I almost want Guthrie to come. We've made a duck and sweet potato croquet. Croquet. Croquet is a game. Croquettes. Um, I want to see how this appears with, with that. I bet you it'll pair really nicely because it's got some a fruity uh, compost next to it. Um, so pork. Um, it will go well with um, brisket, barbecue brisket. It'll go well with... I can see um, barbecue. And, of course, all different kinds of cheeses. We have um, Mahon cheese, which is from um, Mallorca, which is off the coast of Spain, an island off the coast of Spain. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also known for its cheese production, and it's home to the most respected dairy plants of Europe in Europe. Uh, Rockfort cheese, Roquelette, um, goat cheese, Gouda, Monterey Jack, your classic Manchego, you know, in Spain, uh, go with, uh, you know, Manchego cheese, mushroom risotto. I'm seeing, you know, this probably would do good with the barbecue run. I'm thinking ribs as well. Oh yeah, I can see I can see barbecue. It's actually, you know, now that it's it's warming up even more, um, it's kind of petite Syrah like. So I'm going away. I can see that. I'm going away from the Gamay and Pinot. It is at least mine is a bigger wine. Ooh, cool. I, I get the floral. I just poured myself a second glass. Yeah, I'm almost and done I with my second. Floor. Oh well, I. I guess I'm playing catch up with you. Yeah, uh, it's so. it is a much bigger wine than I would say with Gamay or or a Pinot. I, would, I you know I don't think I would put it in with the Gamay or no. Or it's a Pinot Gamay. I put it more with a with the Petit Syrah, Cab Franc, like Cab Franc. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it definitely the, has floral, the floral, the pepper. You know, there there's minerality in there. Um, you know, Michael was saying that the wine shop told him it was vegetal. I don't get vegetal. I'm not getting get any, any pyrazine. Either, and I'll tell you, my my wine cost nineteen dollars, and this is a darn good wine. Yeah. For nineteen dollars. Yeah, I like I said, mine was eighteen, and I will go get more. This is mm -hmm. this at under twenty dollars. This is an everyday wine that can stand up to a not every day to like a special occasion too. I, yes. I'm, I'm digging it. I, big think I, would, I would definitely go with like a brisket, anything smoked, even pulled pork, um, you know, pork loin ribs. And it's definitely hard cheese. Yes. Although it's like goat cheese too, but, um, yeah, I would go more hard. I would go more hard semi, cheese. Semi soft maybe. Um, because Gouda is kind of a semi-soft. Manchego. Um, but I wouldn't go with, uh, it wouldn't go well with like a Parmesan cheese or, or anything like that. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of my, my, yeah, my vegetarian meals. Um, a bean burrito, Chipotle, maybe? Um, yeah, I can see. Maybe not, not hot Chipotle, you know, like no, just a I little. Yeah, no, but like a nice spice in the, spice in the wine. Yeah. A nice bean class. burrito. Um but I think it could go with lighter stuff too. Like I think it can I think that like a, a spinach salad, um you know, with a with bacon bits. Yeah. Oh. Like you know, with bacon, bacon bits. Lard? Yeah. Like I I'm I'm yeah, I mean 18. I, I do think it's, I do think it's similar to Cab Franc. Um, it's, it's, I would, I would classify it closer to Cab Franc than a Pinot and yes. a, a Gamay. And weight-wise, I wouldn't even put it in a Pinot or a Gamay weight-wise no. classification. No. It's definitely medium-bodied, not light-bodied. No, I would even and go I'm medium cool. plus. I'd even go, me it, mine, yeah, mine's, plus. mine's big. Yeah, I guess, you yeah, know, medium plus. Yeah. If I saw this on a menu in a restaurant, I would order it. In yeah. A yeah. I I I am in. I will go if 
buy more of this. Although this, this was sent to me, I will have to confess, this was sent to me as a sample. So I'm totally impressed. I would definitely recommend yeah. the grape and the wine. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very curious to now try another bottle um, to compare it. You know, this, this I love this wine. Um, so I'd like to... Separate. I'd like to try another bottle to see if it is the grape that I like, you know, for $18. Um, 19, yeah. Yeah. I mean, under 20 bucks is, is pretty spot on, you know? Yeah. Um, it's great. And it's great value. It's a great wine. Yeah. I mean, I'm speaking for my wine. You could speak for your wine. Yours is, you know, but, and it would be, you know what? It would be a good summer red to take to a barbecue. Yeah, yeah. I'm still, I, I'm still trying to wrap on, you know, vegetarian meals that it would go with. Um, but like, I, I'm thinking it would go with like an, um, not spicy. I don't. I'm not going spicy, but like an Asian, um, like. Kung Pao, not Kung Pao chicken, um, General Tao's chicken, but General Tao's tofu. Um, yeah, I think General Tao's tofu, too. Like that. I don't think it would go with that. No? Too sweet? I think it's too sweet. Too sweet? Too sweet. Um, I mean, honestly, the thing that's coming to my brain over and over again is cheese. Like, yes. this, is, this is a wine that Mike and I are going to sit outside with, glass in hand, cheese platter in front of me and I'm just going yes. to going to town with cheese. Um, yes. you know, but I, the risotto that I had in Bordeaux is I'm going there with that also. Yeah. yeah that will taste good. And, and mushrooms, it goes, you know, mushroom risotto and yeah. it would probably taste um, well with like a chicken and a mushroom sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not, not for me, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I, you know, again, that mushroom thing is a Cab Franc thing. Mushrooms go very well with, with a Cab Franc. Yeah. Um, and I, it's funny because they talked about how they thought it was Cab Franc, but I don't know if they thought it was Cab Franc from the leaf structure and the, you know, the cluster structure. Like, um, was it elongated? The, the picture was, you know, it was tough because you had a picture in bin and you had a picture on a vine. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, the you, you can identify grapes. That was part of UC Davis, which drove me crazy. But, like, they show you a picture of a grape cluster and we were supposed to identify it by the grape cluster. Um, you know, some are elongated, some are fatter. Um, the berries are bigger or the berries are smaller. Um, you know, all of that stuff. So I'm wondering if it looks like Cab Franc or um, if it tastes like it. And there is a lot of similarity in the taste to me, but there's also, uh, if if I tasted this blind, I would not say it was Cab Franc. Like, I, you know, if I was blind, I wouldn't say it was Cab Franc. But, I ha you know, my palate is very specified to Cab Franc. <laughs> um, there's not enough cherry flavor in it for me to say it's cap okay. there's you know it's it's got a different acidity level it's got yes. a different mouthfeel um to it it's beautiful but it's it to me it's not it's not cap wrong so if i was tasting it i wouldn't say it was so i'm tr i'm curious as to what made them think it was cap wrong but then again they thought carmenere was merlot forever and right i don't get that I mean, has to be done on this particular grade. Right. Um, so maybe, you know, it will be done. Maybe right. it's just not high on your priority. Right. And you know what? If if wine like this is being imported, it will get on people's radar. Yeah. Um, so my guess is that we're getting this for a great price because it's not on too many people's radar. 
Yeah, and, and I, I will say mine is, what did I say mine was a 2012, yours is a 2015. The only difference is a dollar price. Right. So yeah. where my wine is aging really well, and actually it's probably, I would say um, at its peak, Right now, I don't know if I would sell or something like this. See, now that's interesting because yours is a 2012, and you're saying that I, I would, I would not recommend this. Um, okay. And it, I think that it can stand a few more years. You know, I think you, it's drinkable next year. But I'm put it on in line with my mind. Right. So I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say drink. I'm gonna say drink by 2020 is what I would okay. say for this. And I would say mine is probably, I would get it now. I, I wouldn't go past a, a, right. another year. Right. I would, I would definitely get it now. Right. It would make a great holiday. Not not that, you know, here we are in June thinking of the holidays, but this would make a good uh, wine on the holidays. Mm-hmm. And it's from Mencia, Fast Facts. Okay. We got fact number one. Mencia only grows in Spain and Portugal and the Iberian Peninsula, except now it grows in part of Australia. So Australia has decided that it is a good wine. Re it is a good wine grape for Menthia, or great wine region for Menthia, and there is a very small production. So if you take all of the production of Menthia, it is like 95% Spain, like 4% Portugal. And one percent now Australia, or less than one percent in Australia. Fact number two: Mencia is labeled as Jaén in Portugal. It is grown specifically in the northern half of the country. Fact number three: Although Mencia has no relation to Cabernet Franc, a relation was long suspected due to the similarities of aromas. And I will go back to. I agree with the aromas, but the flavor profile is different. Um, I agree with you. Basically because... And, 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 and even the aromas are, are different. I think there's more similarity. Like, I can it's see similar. I can see somebody saying there's similarities in the aromas. But the the palate just is is a different palate. But... I, I can get it. I can get it. But again, I want to go back and I want to look up. I want to compare the grape cluster to grape cluster and the grape leaf to the grape leaf um, because those are identifying factors in terms of visual on the vine. So I would like to go back and look at those and compare those for my own science geekiness, nerdiness of myself. Uh, fact number four. Although Mencia, oh, I forgot the end, is relatively easy to find in the United States, you need to be aware that with many Mencias, you will still only see the appellation name, such as Bierzo, on the front label, not the grape name, as mine does not have the grape name anywhere on the label. And last, according to the latest figures, there are about 25,000 acres of Mencia in Spain, as well as about 7,000 acres in Portugal. And I think there's less than 1,000 acres um, in Australia. So that be... Do you know where in Australia? What? Do you know where in Australia? No, I didn't do... I didn't go that far down. I was just... Sorry, put you on the spot. That's all right. Nope. I'm just noticing my teeth are really purple. I know. I got this one tooth that really picks up. You know, <laughs> I need wine wipes. <laughs> uh, but so that that is Menthia. Um, I'm a I'm a lover. I am too. I got two thumbs up for Menthia. So next month. Yes. We are going to talk about the letter N. Yes, Negriamo. Um, and what day is it? It is going to be on. Monday, July 16th. So we're good. Okay, so you're able to make it on the 16th? Yeah, yeah, we're bottling on the 17th and the 18th. So Okay. Ooh, it's our it's our first year bottling on two days. Nice. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Yes, we are growing. Yeah. I well, I guess technically we bottled so technically we bottled two days cuz we bottled the 
Cab Franc, and then we bottled the rosé at a whole different time. But yeah, rosé. If any of you out there listening, if you can get a hold of Lori's rosé of Syrah, it is absolutely awesome. I haven't even written about it. I think I did post a picture. I don't even know if I did, but we had it one night, and it was oh, thank you. It was just so good. Thank you, thank you. It's it. You know, I say it all the time. It's like when it's. I mean, we don't have children, so you know, we have our wine. <laughs> But when people say they like our wine and they make comments like that, it's it, it's heartwarming. And I words can't explain how appreciative I am and how, um, honestly, I can't explain what it makes me feel like when people post that they love our wine or do, you know, say it. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So, so that is anyway. Menthea. Yes, and we hope we uh, opened up everybody's minds and palates to a new grape. Um, it's something that you would normally go into a liquor store and seek out, but I would definitely recommend um, both of our brands that we were drinking tonight yes. because we were both very, very happy with them, and they're great value. They're both under $20, and I'm telling you, I'm, I don't know if there's going to be much left in my bottle because <laughs> yeah. I'm really enjoying this. I'm I'm on glass three, um, and I'm gonna say there's probably another glass before I, I I hit the sack tonight. Yeah, so, it's it's good. Um, yeah, it is good. So definitely, you know, if if this is the type of wine that you like, definitely go give it a try. Like give it a try. Thank you guys for joining us. And we'll catch you next month. Yes. Slancha. Did you know that Dracina Wines now has a wine club? We named it the Chalk Club. Draco is on our label, but Vegas was getting a little jealous, so we decided he deserved to be our club spokes dog. In Las Vegas, betting chalk means that you are betting on all of the favorites. We are betting that we are one of your favorite wineries, so we thought the name was apropos. The club is simple, yet a bit different than most. When you wager on us, we will ship you three bottles of wine twice a year, once in April and once in September. You can choose all red or mix of red and rosé. You immediately receive 15% off of all your wine purchases throughout the year, but what makes our club stand out is the progressive discount. Let your club membership ride into the next year. Your discount increases. Each year you parlay your membership, you receive an additional 5% off up to a planned maximum of 25%. Your club shipments are discounted to a flat $15, plus we'll cover your club shipping cost for your second shipment. That's $15 house money in a sure bet for you. So please head to our website, dracinawines.com, and find out all of the benefits of joining the Chalk Club and how to sign up. We've stacked the odds so that you can get our award-winning wines without breaking the bank. Thanks for listening to Dracina Wines Podcast. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like us to discuss, please reach out to us on social media. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, Google, and Periscope as at Dracina Wines. I am also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoyt Bud, or email us at dracinawines.com. If you enjoyed our podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast catcher to help others find us more easily. We are found on all of your favorite aggregators. To subscribe easily to iTunes, go to bit.ly forward slash Dracina podcast. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Dracina podcast. And that's a capital D for Dracina and capital P for podcast. Please check out our award-winning wines and find out about our wine club at DracinaWines.com. And remember to always pursue your passion. Slancha.